What prompted me to do this video is that I am contacted on a regular basis by both men and women, mostly women, um, who are frustrated because they feel that they're not clearing HPV as quickly as what they think they should. And the conversation usually is something like, you know, I've been taking AHCC for six months or a year, I've been taking all these supplements, and I'm still HPV positive, I don't understand what's going on. And, um, you know, they feel like they're doing something wrong or that they're missing something or that, you know, they're cursed or they're damaged. Um, and, you know, that's not the case. You know, I don't know what makes why people would think that it's, you know, necessarily that easy to clear HPV. HPV is, it can be challenging for some people, not everybody. You know, I outline in my book some of the things, the cofactors and the pre, uh, predisposing factors to what is related to HPV as well as um, dysplasia and cervical cancer. You know, I outline these things in my book, um, but there's a lot of things that we don't understand. For example, again, in my book, I talk about um, some mutations that are fairly common that people have that will make it more difficult to um, probably clear HPV and also more likely that you're going to develop dysplasia and cervical cancer as well as more likely that you're going to have persistent dysplasia and, and not be able to get rid of it. This is an excerpt out of my book uh, covering the predisposing factors. So again, there's all sorts of reasons, nutritional and, and um, lifestyle factors, as well as mutations. So the most common mutation is the MTHFR mutation, which is methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase um, mutation. So this is a very common mutation. It's at least 50% of the population. But what we know is there's a handful of studies that have demonstrated there's a correlation between um, this mutation and cervical cancer. Now, if you do enough research, online and you come up with some suggestions as far as the types of supplements that you should be taking for HPV as well as cervical dysplasia, you're going to see folic acid. But at this point in time now, we've known about this mutation for so long that most recommendations are going to be for a methylated form of folic acid. Um, in other words, a methylfolate like 5-tetrahydrofolate or something like that. Now there's other mutations. So this is just one of them. Now the reality is there's probably all sorts, and these are referred to as single nucleotide polymorphisms, or what we call SNPs, SNPs or SNPs. So for short, we just call them SNPs. But there's probably thousands, if not tens of thousands of these SNPs, and they're part of what gives us our diversity. So they're part of why people are different from person to person is that we have all sorts of different mutations, and some are good and some are bad. So in my book, I list, you know, some that are bad, at least with regard to cervical dysplasia and HPV, one of them. So there's some that affect the immune system. This is a T lymphocyte mutation. And we know that it alters the immune status of an individual and makes you more susceptible to cervical cancer if you have this mutation. There's one that affects cytochrome P450, which is an enzyme system that's involved with detoxification. And we know that, um, these mutations can significantly increase the likelihood that you're going to develop cervical cancer. Manganese superoxide uh, dismutase is another mutation. What's interesting about this mutation is that, um, you know, having this mutation alone is not necessarily going to make you predisposed toward having cervical cancer, but rather if you have this mutation and you have low levels of beta carotene, lycopene, zeaxanthine, lutein, and vitamin E, you're going to be at higher risk for recalcitrant, you know, for developing dysplasia, for having recalcit recalcitrant dysplasia, as well as having cervical cancer. And then um, glutathione is the most important an antioxidant that's produced de novo or inside the body. So your body produces glutathione, but there's mutations that affect the antioxidant systems in the body as well. So what should you do about these single nucleotide polymorphisms, these mutations that seem to affect HPV and the likelihood that you're going to have dysplasia as well as develop into cervical cancer? Probably nothing. I don't talk about this so much as to offer specific suggestions. I mean, we know about the MTHFR mutation. So yeah, I mean, obviously you should take 
a methylated form of folic acid, but we've known long before the MTHFR mutation that folic acid was important with dysplasia and cervical cancer. In fact, since 1966, we've known that a folic acid deficiency can cause cervical cancer. So decades before we knew about these single nucleotide polymorphisms, including MTHFR mutation, we knew that folic acid was involved. So there's, there's nothing new there. But there's probably hundreds of these mutations that influence HPV and the likelihood that you develop cervical cancer. And the reason I present them in the book and the reason I'm talking about them now isn't to say, well, yeah, we need to find all of these mutations because we can't. We don't test for them all. We don't. We, we know maybe a very small handful that affect HPV, but there's probably hundreds that affect it. And the point isn't to try to um, lose sleep over it and obsess about it but rather to just understand that if you're having a problem clearing HPV or dysplasia, you're not a freak. You're not damaged goods. You're not cursed. There's probably some underlying, um, where there is an underlying reason. There's always a reason that somebody develops dysplasia in the first place. It's just that we can't always identify it. And Again, my point of this video isn't to just give you more to stress about, it's to try to give you less to stress about. What you need to do is to not try to look more and more at minutia and in, in attempt to figure out why am I not clearing this virus? You're not clearing the virus because the virus is hard to clear for some people. Some people can do absolutely nothing. They can have a terrible diet, they can just do nothing at all and that for some reason, you know, again, they probably don't have a lot of these underlying conditions, these mutations. Um, they tend to clear HPV fairly easily. And if they develop dysplasia, sometimes it'll just go away by itself. And then there's other women, um, the ones that I, you know, that I was earlier referring to that are doing everything and that you could think of more than I would typically recommend even. And they're just not clearing it. Um, and getting really frustrated and then doing more and more, you know, questionable things to treat it. And I say questionable because they, you know, invariably you'll read things on the internet to do that probably doesn't have a lot of basis for it and it can get expensive and it can get frustrating. So I, I get it and I talk to people every day, so I get that it's frustrating, but doing more supplements is probably you know not the answer it's um you know there, there's other things you need to be doing so my recommendations is if you are struggling with clearing hpv you know what you first want to do is make sure that you know you maybe have some guidance maybe you need to talk to somebody who has some experience with treating hpv and dysplasia and just kind of do a consult or do a one over and just make sure that you know you're doing what's you know what's reasonable and necessary and if you are you know in effect covering all the reasonable basis that you can cover in treating it then just stay the course and just breathe and try to relax and try not to lose sleep over it and try not to obsess about it because um you know it will go away um, it's just that in some people it ends up taking a little bit longer than in other people and and um, there's nothing you know there's nothing wrong with you it's there's millions of women who struggle to clear HPV and men um, I, I keep adding men on because most men don't test for it but I do have some patients some male patients who have recalcitrant HPV as well where it just isn't clearing and um, you know they're equally frustrated by it as well so takeaway message with this is um you know there's nothing wrong with you you just need to stay the course and be patient and um you know if it's stressing you out too much then you you know you need to try to find some way to mitigate that stress because that's not good either we know stress is not good for your immune system so um, you need to find a way to just, um, whether it's meditation or exercise or something, you need to find a way um, to not be obsessive about it. You know, on that, on that topic, you know, some of the most difficult cases I've seen are the most stressed out and 
as a result, usually they're the ones who are the most obsessed about it and taking the most supplements and things that I would never even recommend. I mean, they're doing everything conceivable under the sun, and, and, but, but the, the factor there, the, maybe what the, um, you know, what the delineating factor is there is that they're just really, really stressed out about it. You know, when I treat with escharotic treatment, for example, it's about 99% effective for dysplasia. So it's, chances are it's gonna get rid of the dysplasia. It's about, at least initially at the time the dysplasia is gone, it's about 90% effective for clearing HPV. So even after you do escharotic treatment, there's maybe a one in 10 chance that you may still have HPV. So it, it can be difficult to get rid of. Um, the virus doesn't destroy the cells that it infects, which makes it hard for the immune system to to target it. So it's not just simply a matter of improving your immunity. Um, I mean, that's a component of treatment for most people, but you could take 11 billion supplements that are supposed to improve your immunity and you could still be struggling with HPV. And, and I'm saying there's, there's nothing wrong with you. You just need to be patient and stay the course. I hope you found this video useful. Um, hit the like button or the thumbs up if you do and um, please subscribe to my channel.